with them in this group is Slovakia and Ukraine. Why don't we shift on over to Ukraine? I like Ukraine. I really like this team, actually. I will say, though, they snuck into this Euros. Dude. Dude, uh, if you watch the first playoff game against Bosnia, uh, Bosnia should have won that game. Like, straight up. They were the better team for most of the entire match. If it wasn't for the great Bosnian squad implosion that happened in the 80th minute in that match, Ukraine would not be here. It's the Bosnians that let Ukraine back into that game. But Ukraine had a really good showing against Iceland, right? So that's where I think they ultimately deserved it by getting that final playoff match against Iceland, beating them pretty handily. And Iceland were good in that match too. So overall, I'm really excited that Ukraine have been able to make it to this tournament because at their best, they play some really silky football, man. They have some excellent midfielders who are really good on the ball. And then you have some some interesting talent up top. Yadimchuk's been tremendous for Ukraine his entire international career. He's still putting in some really good minutes in La Liga. And then, of course, you have Mikhail Mudrik, who, for as much stick as he's gotten this season at Chelsea, he's a different dude at Ukraine, man. He's completely different. He's given a lot more free reign to Rome, and he gets the ball a lot with this Ukraine side. So if you're a Mikhail Mudrik fan specifically, watch Ukraine because... Do. Every other minute, Mudrik is touching the ball. It's actually fascinating to watch. But the reason why I think that works so well is because Mudrik is the type of guy that just needs reps. Yeah. Give him the ball. Let him dribble. Usage. Yeah, usage. High usage. Let him dribble like 20 times, and he'll get past three times. And when he gets past those three times, it's deadly. So I think the more Mudrik just gets the ball, the more chances you give him, the actual more creation that generates for the Ukrainian offense. So I, I really like this Ukrainian team overall. And just in general, I mean, see Gankov on the other side who's been fantastic for Girona. If you don't play Yaremchuk, you can play Dovbik, who was the La Liga top goal scorer, by the way. So... There's a lot of really good weapons that the Ukrainian have at their disposal, and I think they'll be able to use a lot of that here in the Euros. Yeah, they got good players in every sector of the pitch. Up front, the front three, I think, is really nice. Mudrik, Dobik, and Sigankov, and then behind them, Sudakov, I think, is really, really good. Sudakov's good. Sudakov's good, bro, bro, from what I'm seeing. Midfield, you got the Zinchenko presence in the midfield playing for Arsenal. In the back, you have Premier League talent Mikalenko playing for Everton, and then the one and only Andrei Valunin who guided Real Madrid from the goalkeeping position to the UEFA Champions League final. The team is really good. One comment on the whole Euros qualification process that got crazy for them. When I was doing my research, and I'm going to sound Ukrainian saying this, a lot of Ukrainian folks claim that they should have gotten through automatically on a penalty that should have been given on Mikhailo Mudrik and that last match against Italy, Italy where yeah. they ended up tying nil-nil. If they get that penalty call and they score, they don't put themselves in that shoddy position of you know going through a, really, a rigorous playoff system. So I will say that to support the Ukrainians and their efforts here. And I'll even double down on it because, bro, they didn't play a single game at home. Yeah, they played oh, nothing crazy, but yeah. away games this entire time, yeah. and they made it to this tournament. What factor does that have on the team's mentality? Not truly playing at home, playing all these games, and ultimately in a way sense, and still getting results. I think that's ultimately a really good thing, man. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I think it generally shows the the true quality. Like, if you want to know the true colors of this Ukrainian team, it's actually pretty high, man. Like, they're a team with a lot of talent. Again, like like I said, the way that they play. It's almost Spanish in the sense like they like to have a lot of possession. They like to knock the ball around. And then when they see Mudrik try to make a run, they try to release him really quickly. Same with Sigankov. So Ukraine possess some really cool players that can play some really good football. I like Ukraine. My only worry, right, is... They played England, they had Italy in their European qualification group. Pretty tough, honestly. And I think it's even more of a merit that they're able to qualify, right? Because they were right behind Italy. Right behind them. But they couldn't beat them, you know? And I think those are two good tests. They had four tries to England, to Italy. They did tie them twice, but they could not beat them. So I think there is definitely a limitation on how high this Ukrainian team can punch. But hey... They've proven that they can at least play up to Europe's best. I just think that starting in the round of 16, if you have to play against a good team, and then another good team in the quarters, and then another good, like, I think it's going to really stack up the pressure on this Ukrainian side. The max I have this Ukrainian team reaching, 
probably is round of 16. But if they get a favorable draw, I could I could see them in the quarters. So do they fall under the dark horse label, yes or no? Because do they have that, that ability to potentially surprise a top, top team? <sighs> let me know in the comments down below, folks. Yeah, for real, man. Yeah, let me know. Is let UK me know. I'm dark I'm, horse? I'm curious to know if I people think. I think they're right on the precipice of it. They're right there. They're the second best roster in this group, clearly. And the team has a bunch of character, bunch of grit, and the ability to come back in matches. Because if you look at the results, they were they were put in some tough spots throughout this European qualification campaign, but they're able to still get points out of the match, whether it was through tying the game or ultimately getting the victory. I think that's really positive. I think the mentality of this team, I think, is really, really strong with everything they've gone through, even just with their own situation going on at home. Yeah. I think their mentality is very, very strong. I think that will play a big part. I just wonder if their talent level can match that level of mentality to really guide them into a top, top echelon of European football. I'd love to see it. Me too. I really, really would, bro. But I, I struggle putting them in that dark horse category. Me too. And I won't. I won't. Like I said, I, I see this team as a round of 16 team, a solid one at that. And again, if they get a favorable draw, then expect them in the quarters. And then at that point, you know, we saw how close Switzerland got three years ago. So I think Ukraine definitely boasts the same skill set that Switzerland did three years ago. So I think Ukraine could be a surprise at this tournament, whether they are or not. I, that's why I'm not going to say they're dark horses. Oh, man, I'm scared to say no right out. Right out. I, I, I'm scared to say no. I'm going to give them some love here. I'm going to go dark, dark horse, lower tier Ukraine. Lower tier yeah. dark horse. <laughs> lower tier. They're like a brown horse. A gray horse. Yeah. A gray, yeah. Horse, a gray <laughs> horse. I got him as a gray horse. Folks, let us know. What do you think about this Ukrainian team? Are they a dark horse? And how far will they go in this Euros tournament?